Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be exploring the Icon Progress Bar, one of the widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium Collection. Right now we're on a page showcasing several examples of this widget's use. As you might have guessed from the name, this widget allows us to create unique progress bars in the form of a line of icons. There are animated effects to show the progress or how full the bars are. As for the icons, we can pick the ones we want to use from the library or upload custom ones, and then style them using the widget options. Let's see how all that works behind the scenes. You'll need a page to work in. I prepared this one. As you can see, I added some content to create a more natural impression of how the widget might look in real conditions. I created two columns in my section. One with an image and one with some text content created using the section title widget. The text will act as headings for the two progress bars I plan to create. So now I'm going to search for the icon progress bar widget. Let's see. There it is. Drag and drop it to your chosen location on the page. And this is the look we get by default. The placeholder icons are little lightning bolts. And if we open the icon library, simply click here. We can see this icon came from the library, and you can choose a replacement for it from this very extensive collection. Or, let me close this, you can add a custom SVG. To do that, click here. I already have a custom icon I want to use, so I'll just need to select and insert media. And there the new icon is. Once we have the icon we want, we can choose how many iterations of it will be in the progress bar. That's the number of icons setting. By default there are 10, but I'll reduce that to 8 for my design. Ok, there. After that we have the number of active icons. That's like setting the percentage fill on a regular progress bar. It's set to 5 and we can see the first 5 icons in the line are visually distinct from the rest of them. The remaining 3 count as unfilled, so I have a total of 8, just as I set in the previous option. Ok. Following that, we have the gap between icons. When I start to move the slider, you can see how the icons draw apart. The value you set here is how many pixels of space will be between the individual icons. I'll set 12 pixels for this. Ok, done. Then we have the icon animation delay. The value is in milliseconds and the default setting is 100. With this option we determine how slowly or quickly the animation for the progress bar fill moves. If I replace the default value with 20, then the icons load so quickly you can barely tell there's any movement. But if I set a larger number, like 500 for example, then we can see how icon by icon changes its look to indicate the amount of progress. For my part, I'll go back to the default setting, 100 milliseconds. Next, there is another animation option, the animation start. The value is in percentages and you have this note explaining it. Basically, you can use this to set how much of the icon progress bar widget will be visible relative to the bottom of the browser window before the animation that fills the progress bar gets activated. It's there to make sure visitors will see the animation rather than it running through before they've come to it or while the widget isn't visible. Since I only have this one section on my demo page, I'll leave this set to the default 15%. However, you can change this to see what works best for your page and its content. That wraps up the general options section. After it, we have the developer tools section. It contains just one option. If you switch it to yes, then it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, the light grey text you see on the page. You can copy this text for use elsewhere on your site. Let me switch this back. Ok. Besides that, we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources should you need them. And that's it for the options in the content tab. The next tab contains options for styling this widget, and all of those are, as you might have expected, for styling the icon. Firstly, we have the boxed option. It allows us to set whether the icons will have a boxed background or not. Whether you enable it or not, you'll still keep all these options underneath. Except, if you enable the boxes, you'll get a few more options for styling those boxes. I'll switch this to yes, so we can examine those additional options as well. Ok, you can see the change both on the page and in the options right away. The next thing we can set is the size of the icons. 
you can do that by dragging the slider. Or if you don't want to do it freehand, you can type in a new pixel value here. I'll set 29 for my icons. Don't worry, we're just starting. I won't be leaving my icons in two rows. After this, we have the icon color option. It's very intuitive, so you can easily set anything you like. Since I have a specific color I want to use for my design, I'll type in its hex code. There we go. Next, we have the active color for the icons. With this, we can set a different color for the icons in the fill part of the progress bar. This is very important if you don't have a boxed background to differentiate the fill. Let me set something new just to show you. And there. You can see the five icons I picked as the active ones have a completely different color. For my design, I'll set plain white. Then we have the background color. This is one of those options you get only if you enable the boxes. If you pick a new color here, you can change all the box backgrounds at once. I'll just move this slider here to make the background completely transparent. There. And then I will use the active background color to pick a new color for the active or filled portion of the bar. Give me a moment to add the right hex code. Okay. After that, there is an option for picking a border color. There is a default border width that's already set. Therefore, if you simply choose a color here, you can make the border around the boxes visible. And if you decide to use a border, you have the border size option where you can adjust the width of the border lines. So if I set, for example, 3 here, I'll get 3 pixel wide borders around the boxes. Ok, I'll clear this. And the color as well, since I don't plan on using a border for my design. Alright. However, if you want to use a border, there's the active border color option as well. With it, you can pick a color, then I set 0 for my border size, so I need to increase that. Ok. Then we can create borders only around the active boxes, like so. Now that we've seen that, I'll remove the change settings. As I said, I don't plan on using a border. Ok, with that done, we come to the stroke color option. This is... I'll pick a new color just to show you. This is a way to change the color of the icon's outline. Not the color of the icon itself, mind you. We already saw the option for that. With the stroke color, you can change the icon's outline or frame, however you prefer to think of it. But it should be noted here that not all icons have an outline, and this option won't have any effect without one. Alright, I'll clear this since I don't plan on using it. The same goes for the active stroke color. But let me show you. If I set a new color for it, that new color will appear only on the active icons, while the rest will remain unchanged. Okay. After that, we have the box size. It's exactly what the name says, a way to adjust the size of the boxes holding the icons. As you can see, a change in the box size has placed my icons all in the same row. I'm happy with this look, so I'll be keeping 64 pixels as the value. Next, we have the border size option. We looked at that earlier, so let's skip down to border radius. Despite its name, this option will work even if you don't change any of the other border settings. What it does is, it can round out the box corners. For example, if I set 20 pixels here, then my boxes will still be square but with blunted corners. If you set an even larger value for this, like 50 pixels, then the boxes will get so smoothed down that they will change into circles. This is the look I want to keep for my design. With that, we come to the last of the style options, stroke width. It refers to the same icon outline I mentioned when we were looking at the stroke color option. With this option, however, you can change the thickness of the icon's outline. If I increase the value, the icons seem to get bolder because their outline has become thicker. And, as you can see on the page, this option works on both the active and inactive icons. For my design, I'll set 0 here to essentially remove the outline. Alright. With that, we covered all the content and style options for this widget, but we're not quite done. Although there is the advanced tab left, it contains options that you get with all Elementor widgets, not just our icon progress bar widget, so we won't be covering it in this tutorial. But what I do want to do is to create another instance of an icon progress bar, so you can see the difference in looks you can accomplish with just a bit of variation in the settings. To do that, I'll click here to open the element selection, then search for the widget I want. There it is. Drag it to where I want it on the page. Ok. Just like before, I'll replace the icon first. 
I already have the custom SVG I want to use in my media library. That is the one. Insert media. OK. Then I'll change the number of icons to 9 and the number of active icons to 6. After that, I'll change the gap between icons to 12 pixels. OK, that's all I wanted in the Content tab for this design. Let me switch over to the Style tab. Here, I'll enable the box layout again. Then I'll increase the icon size to 19 pixels. Following that, I'll change the icon color to white. And set the same in the Active color to keep the icons matching, unlike my previous example. OK, then for the box background color, I'll set plain black. But I'll make the active background color different. Give me a moment to add the hex code I want. Alright, that's it. I'll exit the option and see what else I need to change for this design. Ah, I'll reduce the box size a bit by putting 54 pixels here. And I'll neaten things up by setting 0 for the border size, and 0 for the border radius, as well as for the stroke width. And there's my second design of the icon progress bar widget. Both are complete, and I'll hit update now. OK. Also, I'll refresh the page so we can see the animation that gives the illusion of the bar loading. There. To finish up this video, I'd like us to take one more look at the page we started from. Here you'll be able to find a couple more examples of design solutions for this widget. Whether you choose to recreate what you find here, or use it as a starting point for your own design, is entirely up to you. Just like this video tutorial, the page is intended as a helpful resource. Hopefully it has answered any questions you may have had and inspired you to give this widget a go. If there is anything still unclear, or if you have any comments or suggestions you'd like to leave us, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe and be the first to learn about any new tutorials on our channel. Thank you for watching!